feel like I should be dancing over here. Good morning. Welcome to this Palm Sunday worship, and um, just so glad to have all of you here and all of those that will join us on YouTube. Let's pray. We come with hosannas. We come waving palms. We come as we are. And thank you, Lord God, that you welcome us, that you invite us in, that you were here waiting before we were even out of bed. Thank you for this time together. Thank you that as we approach this week, that sometimes our palms are not always held as high and that we have to accept that that shouting and crucif crucify was part of who we are too. So we come with hearts that need repentance and forgiveness. Amen. If you're able, let us pray. Hosanna, God saves us. Thank you, Father, for your saving grace in Jesus. As we hear your word to us this day, may we find our place in your story that continues to be carried into our world on the back of monkey. Donkey, excuse me, amen. I'm reading from Zechariah, just two short verses today. Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. I'm sure it's very familiar. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Our second scripture this morning is from Luke. Chapter 19, verses 28 through 48. Maybe. Hear the word of the Lord. <clears throat> After he said this, he went on up ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And when he had come near Bethpage and Bethany at the place called Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he told them. And they were untying the colt and its owners asked him, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. And he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. And as he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, if you even, if you, even you had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you, hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground and you and your children within and they will not leave within, within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. Then he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling things there. And he said, it is, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer and you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching in the temple. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people kept looking for a way to kill him, but they did not find anything they could do for all the people were spellbound by what they had heard. Amen. The donkey in our Palm Sunday story today was conscript conscripted to be part of that little parade. Maybe it was actually kind of a big parade that day. The young colt had never been ridden before, 
But we not- you notice it didn't balk, it didn't bray, it didn't carry on. It simply carried Jesus amid all the hubbub up the hill to Jerusalem. And it wasn't an easy trip, but his cargo was kind and gentle, full of mercy and grace. And you will notice the donkey didn't have anything to say, but only was only need for the donkey was to carry Jesus through the throngs into the crowded city of Jerusalem that was getting ready for Passover. Donkeys are found throughout scripture. I know you probably haven't done a search on donkeys, but there's quite a few stories of donkeys in our scriptures. They're often a beast of burden or they're the mount of kings coming in peace, or there are even talking donkeys in scripture. In case you're interested in that story, it's in Numbers 22. Um, His refusal, that donkey that was the talking donkey, his refusal to keep going straight ahead kept Balaam, his rider, safe from the sword of an angel. It's a great story. Donkeys were to people in Jesus' day the way cars are to us. You know, they were essential transportation and a way to haul your goods or some people wherever they need to be carried. This donkey was a colt. It was a foal of a donkey. According to one source I read, this donkey was like cash in the bank. It was a hedge against bad times or high taxes, for it could be sold and the, and the money be used for whatever was needed. So for Jesus to delay claim to it and for his disciples to borrow this donkey, um, that was a big deal because stealing a donkey would result in death for whoever stole it. But the owners, the people were agreeable when they said the Lord needed it. That was all they told them. Indeed, God does lay claim to all that we have because all that we have came from God, even a donkey's colt. The donkey was crucial to Jesus' trip into Jerusalem. For riding in this donkey, <clears throat> riding on this donkey was rich with meaning. As the passage from Zechariah uh, reminded us, just riding a donkey offered the message of righteousness, peace, victory, and humility. Jesus didn't have to say a word. The donkey said it all simply by being the donkey and what the donkey symbolized in scripture and tradition. Conquering kings are who rode horses when they came to do battle. But those who came in peace rode a donkey. Zechariah wrote that the king on a donkey is righteous or just, depending on how you translate the word tazdik. And then he brings salvation or victory, depending on how you translate the word yasha. And he's either humble or lowly, depending on how you translate ani. All of these words are in Hebrew, and all of them, can be, you can see, if you look through all the different variations, almost everybody uses a different one. So there no, there's no consistency. So it's almost like these words hold both meanings, righteousness and justice, salvation and victory, and humbleness and lowliness. So keep that kind of rolling around in your mind as we go forward. This humble king will overcome the chariots and weapons of war to speak peace to all. Interesting. Interesting. These verses from Zechariah offer us a different lens with which to view Jesus during Holy Week. Jesus humbly endured humiliation and death, a strange outcome for somebody who came bearing peace. And yet through his death and resurrection, he offers righteousness and a kind of unexpected salvation. That wasn't how the Jews expected to get salvation, not from a crucified Messiah. Most certainly not. And this is considered victory. Now, they would not have seen that as a victory. So these words are, of Zechariah are extreme. There's extreme irony in how it compares to what actually happens during this Holy Week. And all of this was communicated through riding on a donkey without saying a word. If we look back through the stories of Jesus, we can find these qualities. Maybe that's why it didn't take, Jesus didn't have to say anything. Because we can see his righteousness or justice um, all through when he ministered to the little children. He had compassion on the poor. He helped the leper be free of leprosy. He forgave the woman caught in adultery. 
But part of Jesus' justice in re- was restoring people to their lives. When he healed the lame man, he said, pick up your mat and go home. When he, healed, uh, or when he offered folks forgiveness, he told them to sin no more. He didn't just forgive them. He had an instruction. This righteousness of Jesus is not as easy as it looks like. It, it meant caring for those whose lifestyles usually Gentiles, or situations we might not agree with. Or people in his day wouldn't have agreed with the Gentile lifestyle at all. But to be righteous like Jesus means we still would show them compassion and seek to offer them the Prince of Peace today. Jesus came in peace, but what, what a peace he offered. Peace meant welcoming strangers like tax collectors. Those were really strange people in Jesus' day. Even foreigners. He, he healed the, the, the um, servant of one of the soldiers. Those were strangers, and they were not welcome. Peace meant offering welfare to neighbors, even the ones you don't like. Well, Jesus, the Samaritan, and the man that was in the ditch, the Samaritan would have been the neighbor you wouldn't have wanted to come help you if you were in a ditch. But he was, but he was the one that helped. Peace meant healing for those in need. Peace meant forgiveness for all who would receive it, even the ones who nailed Jesus to the cross. Jesus. Peace meant loving your enemy and heaping coals of kindness on his or her head. Peace meant not cheating others and caring, but caring for them instead. Humility or lowliness in Jesus' life was doing what was right and good and true, even if Jesus had to overturn some tables to do so. Humility meant not thinking about himself, but thinking about others' needs first. Humility or the lowliness of Jesus was lived out in a selfless sort of way, God-centered way, and was moved always by compassion. Salvation or victory came through death on a cross. I think we would much prefer our victories to, victories to be, you know, when you, um, you beat evil in the world by force or just our sheer willpower, we overcome it. I think we're much more comfortable with that. But Jesus rode the donkey and he showed us that God brings victory in ways that we may not recognize as victorious at first. It may not be as obvious as, say, the score at the end of a ball game where you can tell which team won and which team lost. We like that. That's easy. I can tell you're the winner, you're the loser. Cut and dry, black and white. When God is victorious, it may look like defeat. Martyred Christians appear as if they are defeated. And it seems like no one cares, but we would be wrong because their deaths in God's eyes are the ultimate victory. They stood with Christ even in the face of death, and they are great victors. God will use their deaths to bring peace in Christ, not through the show of deadly force usually, but through the work of the Spirit as people continue to pray for the salvation of those who killed the saints. There is much evidence, if you go back and look at the history of martyrs, that the church actually grew because of martyrdom. It did not decrease. Strangely enough, if we listen to Luke's rendition of Palm Sunday story today, he didn't talk about one single palm. Really? Did Luke forget? (laughs) Maybe that's why one of the authors I read suggested that we needed to call this Donkey Sunday instead of Palm Sunday. Because this author suggested that greater than the palm branches is the message and the invitation of the donkey that was welcomed by many, but refused by the religious leaders and elite in Jerusalem. And Jesus mourned this rejection, didn't he? He said in our scripture, you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. That's, That's a pretty telling statement. The donkey did not bring an easy message. Is it any wonder Jesus was rejected? Truly, many of us may not like the message of the donkey. It's not the American way, but it's God's way. 
in Jesus. Henri Nouwen wrote this book called um, Show Me the Way, and it talks about the descending way of Jesus. A way that doesn't s- mean seeking our own way or our own self-interest, but instead we trust in God as we trust in Jesus. That in him, in Jesus, we become like the lowly donkey, carrying Jesus, bringing his justice, peace, victory, and humility. However, becoming like this donkey that carries Jesus, it means unlearning some things. We have to unlearn our knee-jerk response. You know, that angry response we get or that exasperated (laughs) response. Or, you know, that's how we are. And letting the Holy Spirit remake us. It is in seeing others the way Jesus sees them and realizing that we're called to go even where we may not want to go. But if we say yes to the donkey, we can belong to those who carry Jesus with them wherever they go. Offering Jesus in how we come with righteousness, victory, peace, and humility. Looking not for confrontation, but to spread the love of Jesus in tangible ways. Sometimes it means we'll carry Jesus in places like that donkey and we won't get a chance to speak. We won't, there won't be any chance for us to talk. And yet we have Jesus with us and he carries all authority in heaven and on earth. That's the same Jesus who healed the hurting, paid attention to the lonely and invited the children's praise. Being this donkey, I'm going to warn you this morning, it can be very challenging to be this kind of donkey. We may not want to go to the places Jesus invites us to go. We may feel we're not worthy or able or ready. And that's okay, because Jesus is. Our Lord is simply, our job is simply to carry in all our lowly, faithful, sure-footedness, the Lord and Savior of the world who comes with peace and righteousness and victory and humility to whatever situation we or others face. This past month or two, I I want to tell you about some donkeying I've been doing. I've been carrying Jesus to a seminary friend of mine. Her name is Marlenis, who is in Florida fighting liver cancer. She is a believer. We went to seminary. We had many classes together but is challenged by this aggressive cancer. She asked me to pray, and I thought, me? I mean, she is just a strong, strong believer, and I thought, why is she asking me? Who am I to pray with her? And then, oh yes, I almost forgot. I am a donkey carrying Jesus. In this case, into her pain, into her cancer tumors, into her desperation, combining my faith with hers, to bring Jesus love and victory and the kingdom healing grace, which he's already accomplished on the cross. Well, I invite you this week to think of yourself in a new way, to say yes to being a donkey, if you will, who carries Jesus, and then to carry Jesus' life-giving peace, righteousness, humility, and victory that speaks volumes long before or after we can say even one word. Let's pray about that. Father God, you are our master. You are creator. You are God of all the universe. And I have no idea why you would want us to be donkeys. Although maybe that is a good use for us, maybe. But we're to be obedient donkeys. We're to carry your son even today, even on tomorrow when it's not Palm Sunday anymore. Even when we'd rather be, you know, the one looked at and we'd rather be the one that gets all the accolades. You invite us today to be, to be humble, to carry the victory of Christ in a humble way to carry your righteousness of your son and, the, and the, the wonder of his humility with us, in us, on us, wherever we go. And that isn't always easy. 
But God, we are, we are honored, if we think about it, that you would use us at all. We are fallible people who often don't go about with humility and, and often are think, might be thinking more of ourselves than we are of the people that you want us to serve. So thank you for this opportunity to rethink how we take Jesus with us and for helping us this week as we go through Holy Week to remember that sometimes we don't have to say anything. Sometimes our actions speak louder than our words. But sometimes we're called to speak. So I thank you for your Holy Spirit who goes with us and will help us know when the time is when we're supposed to talk and give us the words to do so. Lord, this morning we carry folks to you who um, have needs. We, we carry uh, Bill Sharps and his family. And we thank you for being with them. We know that already. You are surrounding them with your love and your grace and your comfort. But, but, but we pray that together and believe that together because that gives strength to their family, to his family, and that gives strength to him. Thank you that they will all get to be together tomorrow. And Lord, we lift up um, Becca and Joe's family as they are um, celebrating the life of her grandfather, Frank Bush, and he has gone to be with you, dear Lord. So we are celebrate, celebrate that as we, and I'm sure they mourn his um, passing from this life into the church triumphant. But there is triumph there. And so God, that is something to be blessed and not to mourn that. But um, the sadness comes in missing him here. So we hold them up with prayers of comfort. Lord, um, we think of our world where there is much need for peace, much need for our righteousness that has compassion combined, that sees people who are lowly and would walk with them in their place where they are. Not, and, and, and not hold ourselves above, but to be right there with them, like Jesus was. So Lord, we can think of many places across this world this morning, and we lift those to you, that when we have an opportunity, we could speak a peace we could speak your love and compassion and your righteousness and justice and your victory through the cross. Lord, there are others in need on our prayer list this morning, many names, many names, who need your love and grace, who are awaiting your healing even now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, let us be the ones that take that word of healing and comfort and peace to those this week. We don't know who it's going to be that you're going to put in our path, but may we be ready to share in some way, shape, or form you. In your name, Jesus, we pray it as we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us say together what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, he was crucified dead and buried, he descended into hell. On third day he rose again from the moon, and he ascended into heaven, and he sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We get ready to sing our hymn. I forgot to mention on the back of the bulletin, if you're wondering, we're starting to add a little piece the session decided about giving, 
and and what happens at the community dinners. So be looking for this on. It's supposed to be the first Sunday of the month, but I forgot. So next month it'll be on the first Sunday of the month, and um, we'll be that way. We can help us be better stewards of all that God's given us. Our final and closing hymn is "Right On, Right On," number one ninety-eight. First three verses. That's right, I'm benedicting now. I forgot myself. As you leave this lovely place today, and don't forget to take your palm branch with you, be ready to be a donkey this week. You never know the place that you're taking peace. You're carrying the one who has all authority in heaven and earth. You're bringing victory. You're bringing compassion and lowliness. In the name of God our Father, and his son Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen.